Hey class, welcome back. I hope you guys are all doing well. Today is our third session for this week, and today we're going to be looking at the beginning of the Second World War. We've had a good foundation uh, with our last PowerPoint uh, lecture where uh, Hitler made his bold moves, and that basically took us up to where he is about ready to invade Poland, and the invasion of Poland is what starts the Second World War. So uh, we're going to be looking at the invasion of Poland today. We're going to be looking at the invasion of France because after he invades Poland, he's got to swing all the way back and then he goes and invades France. And then we are going to look at the Battle of Britain. That will give us a good, a good start for the Second World War. Okay, so hang on. We're going to move now into the PowerPoint. Okay, class, we're going to have our first PowerPoint lecture on the Second World War, Part 1. So we had last time we had looked at the... Uh, the setup for where Hitler uh, made the treaty, the pact with Russia, and basically that was setting the stage for uh, the invasion of Poland, which is basically the official start of World War II. September 1st, 1939 to October 6th, 1939 uh, was the invasion of Poland, the Battle of Poland. October 6th is when, when Poland fell. Uh, German, the German army invaded from the west, and that officially started World War II on September 1st, 1939. It was a blitzkrieg war strategy, which we had talked about previously. It means lightning war, just a, a fast, a fast, hard-hitting war. Um, the bu bullet point there where it says coordinated the army, that's one of the key characteristics of blitzkrieg war strategy. Uh, it coordinated the army and the air force to conduct quick attacks destroying anything in their path. And and that was um, a key component of Blitzkrieg is that as the army was was moving across the plains of Poland and and uh, the tanks and the infantry and all of their moving across on the ground, the Air Force, the Luftwaffe, uh, they're giving uh, air support to all of the uh, soldiers and tank units moving across. Uh, the land because as they're uh, headed towards a let's say a Polish army division or or um, a, a city that is controlled by the Polish army, the, the Luftwaffe would come through and be strafing them, uh, strafing the military, the infantry of the Poles, um, bombing the cities. I mean, doing all of this damage from the air, and as the uh, ground troops are moving across, so. It was just a quick, hard-hitting war. Uh, one of the uh, positive traits of that war is that it preserves soldiers' lives, and it's and it also preserves expenditure of arms and equipment. And that would be for any any military, not just the German army. But if you can move into an area and beat the uh, beat the enemy uh, quickly, you can obviously save on your soldiers' lives and your expenditure of arms. Well, Russia stuck to the Molotov-Ribbentrop uh, Pact. And on September 17th, so 16 days later, September 17th, 1939, the Russians invaded Poland from the east. And as, they, as the Poles were focusing on the Germans in the west, they were unaware that the Russians had been massing at, on the eastern front of Poland, and all of a sudden they invade and the Germans and Russians meet at the German-Soviet demarcation line. So here's just a couple of quick pictures. This bottom left picture is uh, kind of a famous picture for the beginning of World War II. This is a, um, a gate on a roadway that crosses from Germany into Poland, and so the German army is breaking the gate down. But these are some early tanks that they had. I mean, just... Planes coming through. So, invasion of Poland. Here's the German, Germans and Russians. The left is this guy. Here's a German, and this is the Russians. And they're meeting uh, at the demarcation line. So they've come together. They've conquered Poland. Just a quick map. So, again, this is all Germany. And... Um, the Germans move in here, and then on the 17th of September, the Russians move in, and then they they meet up here on the middle of Poland. 
these little arrows down here when when they invade Poland, war is declared, and the French attempt to do a little bit of a movement down here. It's called the Saar region, S-A-A-R. And uh, they did absolutely nothing down here. It was a really weak attempt to do something, and they did nothing. Next, we're going to talk about the invasion of France, May 10th, 1940 to June 25th, 1940. Again, very fast invasion. Great Britain and France declared war on September 3rd, 1939, after the invasion of Poland. So, two days after Germany invades Poland, Great Britain and France declare war on Poland. Now, when they do this, there's some problems. First off, Great Britain was in no position to do much of anything. Okay, Great Britain did not have a big army. They, 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 they were in, again, in the trying to recover from their uh, from the depression and from all of that. I mean, it was just, they were, just, were not in any kind of a position to do much of anything. Now, France, they, they had been building up some military on their eastern front with Germany. And so what they did was they tried to attack the Saar region of Germany. But that stalled, and they basically returned back to their starting point. Okay, so that's this part right here. They tried to attack. They didn't go anywhere. They came back, and they sat there. Great Britain and France knew that they needed to rebuild their army. So that's why there's such a big di uh, um, length of time between the fall of Poland and the invasion of France was because Hitler had to move his military from, from basically from one side of, of Poland, Germany and Poland, and get them set up on the other side with France to be able to invade uh, that side. So there's, there's kind of a lull in what's going on, and it's giving time for Great Britain and France to build some military, but also giving Germany time to move their army from uh, the eastern front over to a western front so they can invade France. So on May 10th, May 10th, 1940, Hitler invades France and the Low Countries, which the Low Countries are Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. And it took the French completely by surprise. The main German force attacked through the Ardennes Forest, but the French thought the main ta attack would come through the Low Countries, much like World War I. Okay, so I'm going to explain this here really quick. Over here now is, is Germany, and right here where my arrow is circling is a really thick forest called the Ardennes Forest. And so in World War I, the invasion of Germany into France in World War I was a swing like this up through the Netherlands and Belgium and then down in, and they were stopped here short of Paris. This was basically the Western Front of World War I, where my arrow is going back and forth. So this is the Ardennes Forest. And so what happened was, the French and now the British, the British Expeditionary Force, the BEF, and the French, what they did was they didn't put too many people, uh, soldiers along here because on the other side of the border is this big forest. And so what they did was they put more soldiers up in here in Netherlands and Belgium. So they, they got up here. Well, what happened was the invasion of France on May 10th the Germans moved through the forest. They were successful in moving through the forest and basically swung in this way. Okay, we'll come back to this map in a second. This surprise attack pushed the push uh, attack pushed the cut off British and French forces to the sea. Okay, so what happens is the Germans move through the forest and come in really fast. And now the British Expeditionary Force and the French are stuck up here. And this arm coming in of the German forces pushes the, the French and the Germans, this, or excuse me, the French and the English this way. Okay, moving them this way where my, my arrow is. And they're going to they're gonna centralize right here on this little city, little, it's got a little bigger than a town, but this little city called Dunkirk right here. In the meantime, because they're cut off, the German forces start swinging into France. 
the Battle of Dunkirk. The British Expeditionary Force and some French units were pushed back against the sea at Dunkirk. Prime Minister Winston Churchill ordered every available boat, even civilians, to cross the English Channel and save as many men as they could. And this was codenamed Operation Dynamo. 338,226 men, which includes 123,000 French soldiers, were evacuated from Dunkirk. It's called the Miracle of Dunkirk. And so, here's Dunkirk. British boats, ships, even civilian little boats, whatever they could get, crossed the English Channel, picked up the soldiers off the beach, and brought them back to Great Britain so they can fight another day. It's called the Fall of Dunkirk for um, the Germans take it. It's called the Miracle of Dunkirk because they res- the British rescue all these soldiers off the beach. And they recently made a movie about that also. Okay, so here you can see Dunkirk in the background. This is the beach. And you have the line of soldiers walking out. Look, at they're up to their necks in water to get on the boat. Okay, you can see them in the water. They're getting on boats. They're trying to get as fast as they can to get on boats. You have these little little boats, big boats, whatever it is, just packed with soldiers to take them across the English Channel back to Great Britain. France falls on June 25th, 1940. Hitler traveled to France and signed the armistice with France in the same rail carriage at the exact same spot that the Germans capitulated World War I. Hitler used this place as a supreme moment of revenge for Germany over France. German forces permeated France and fortified the Channel Coast. France divided, was divided between occupied France and Vichy France. Vichy France was a German puppet state which was unoccupied by German soldiers, but the Germans held tight control of Vichy France. Okay, so we'll just look look right here at France. So here's um, the Ardennes Forest. The Germans went through the Ardennes Forest, cutting off the British and the French up here. When they moved through cutting them off, They also moved down here and pushed the British Expeditionary Force and the French to the town of Dunkirk. They flee Dunkirk and go across. The British and French flee and go back over here to Great Britain with all the boats. So then Germany swings in and takes all of this, France. Now, the lighter green here is occupied France. This is where Germans are. This is where German soldiers are. And they fortify the coast with the English Channel. And this is all forts. And this is going to come into play in 1944 with Operation Overlord when the Allies invade France on D-Day. Okay, but for right now, they're just building up forts. Vichy France, this kind of bluish color, Vichy France is um, not occupied by Germany, but they're loyal to Germany. It's a puppet state. Vichy France, they're in agreement with, uh, they just go along with everything. I mean, they even ship out Jews. When the Holocaust is going on, they're shipping Jews out to go be killed in Poland. So Vichy France is basically a puppet state of Germany. So the invasion of France, here's the um, railroad car that they signed the armistice with France in, and this is the exact same car and also the exact same spot that World War I ended where Germany signed the capitulation to end World War I. So this was a great victory for Hitler. And here's a picture, a pretty famous picture of Hitler by the Eiffel Tower in Paris. So what, what Germany could not do in World War I, in four years of war to get to, uh, to, get to Paris, or to take France, uh, Hitler did it in a couple of weeks. That takes us to the Battle of Britain 
On June 18, 1940, a speech was given by Winston Churchill stating, quote, The battle for France is over. I expect the Battle of Britain is about to begin. Okay, so Winston Churchill said that. After the fall of France, Great Britain was the only Allied force left. Now, you got to remember, Russia had, is sitting over there not doing anything right now, and the United States would not join the war until 1941. And Russia wouldn't join until 1941 either. When, when Germany invades Russia, then obviously Russia becomes an ally. Basically, England, Great Britain, is the only Allied force even left. So what happens? July 10th, 1940 to October 31st, 1940 is called the Battle of Britain. The opening attack was the Luftwaffe attacked a British convoy in the English Channel. So the Luftwaffe begins mass bombings of air bases, military posts, and then they start bombing civilian populations. The Battle of Britain was an all-air battle. Okay, so between these dates, July 10th to October 31st, it's just bombings and airplanes fighting each other. That's the Battle of Britain. There's no ground war for the Battle of Britain. Great Britain responded with fighter and bomber air strategy. It's the first battle in history to be exclusively an air battle. RAF means Royal Air Force. RAF pilots came from many countries. During the Battle of Britain, 1,000 British planes were lost. 1,800 German planes were lost. Germany was not making as much progress as it wanted. So what happened was Hitler decides to allow the bombing of London. Before this, they were just bombing uh, air bases and military bases. Well, now he starts bombing London. This decision was actually an advantage for Great Britain. Number one, because the British people strongly united. And then number two, the diversion of German bombing to civilian city allowed for repairing of Royal Air Force airfields. So if you bomb an airfield, if you bomb the runways, then the airplanes can't take off. Well, if they shift the bombing to the city, well, the airfields can be repaired. And that's what happened. This German attack was to prepare for a German invasion of Great Britain, which was called Operation Sea Lion. Operation Sea Lion was Hitler's plan for German, the German army to invade Great Britain, to invade England. And there was a whole elaborate plan on how to do this. But the first part was the Battle of Britain had to be won. They had to have air superiority over the English Channel and over Great Britain for the German soldiers to invade Great Britain. The problem is Hitler never got air superiority. Because the Battle of Britain dragged on for a while and they lost a lot of planes. And so Hermann Goring's Luftwaffe never really uh, knocked out the British, uh, the British Air Force. So Hitler ended up having to call off Operation Sea Lion. It was the first major defeat of Germany. Now the thing is, is that they lost 1,800 planes... And also they lost the pilots, they, the bomber crews, all that. They lost that. So a lot of men were lost also. But they really didn't lose a lot. They, they didn't lose anything in regards to their army. So even though they lost the Battle of Britain, um, it wasn't really a huge blow to the German army. It, it was definitely a blow to the German Luftwaffe. And it was definitely a blow to Hitler's uh, ego. So it was the first major defeat of Germany. Hitler began his planning for the invasion of Russia in 1941. So when the Battle of Britain ended, Hitler just kind of basically moves his focus away from Great Britain and is now begins to plan for Russia. So we have uh, Winston Churchill over here on the left, Hitler in the center, and this is Hermann Goring. Remember him? He was the, the hero during World War I. Um, in that PowerPoint slide, there's a picture of him when he's younger. So here's some pictures. Um, here's some air crews. This is this was commonplace during the Battle of Britain. These uh, these are pilots, and they're just waiting in their in their uh, in their room, their break room. So when air sirens went off and German planes were spotted, these guys would run out to their planes, take off, and go up and fight the bombers. So here's some air crews here. Uh, this is a German plane over uh, probably London. 
This is probably the River Thames. Again, more propaganda. For this is propaganda for the English to, to recruit new uh, pilots. So never was so much owed by so many to so few. Uh, here's the here's London Bridge, and you can see the bombing and smoke in the background. Here's some air battle going on. Here's uh, British British people in an underground uh, bunker or an underground. It could be like a subway. I don't know where they're at. But they're here because of a bombing raid. So that was commonplace. And that's going to be it for part one of the Second World War. I'll see you in a second. Okay, that's going to be it for today. We've got a good basis now for the Second World War. Uh, when we look at the Second World War, there's different theaters of the war. There's uh, the European theater, which we just began, um, where it's... Uh, mainland Europe and the European theater is also going to move into the Russian campaign uh, which is going to drag on for a couple more years all the way till 45. Um, but we also have uh, the African theater because we're going to be looking at that also where uh, Hitler has to come in and, and help Mussolini out because Mussolini got in trouble in Africa. There's and then that kind of part also we start looking at the Balkans and Greece uh, that area there. Uh, so there's the African theater, uh, but then there's also the Pacific theater with uh, the entry of the war, uh, with um, America being attacked by the uh, Empire of Japan at Pearl Harbor, and so that opens up the Pacific theater. So there's a couple different theaters that we're looking at. It gets into a lot of great detail, but we're just going to be hitting kind of like the the top, uh, uh, you know, the top level of things. We're not going to get into really, really great detail with with commanders and and of different battles and all of that. We, we we'll talk about some battles. Uh, but really, I, I just wanted to give you, for you to have an overview of uh, the Second World War. Because, like I said, when I took this in college, um, I actually took uh, several, uh, several courses just on the Second World War. I, had, I took a course just on the war with Japan and a course j on uh, the war in Africa and, and Europe. So uh, they have whole college courses just on sections of the Second World War. We, we, we're just doing it in a couple of lectures on PowerPoint. So uh, it's just going to be an overview of what's taking place. Okay, so other than that, uh, keep up on your reading. I uh, hope you guys are doing well during this COVID-19 uh, quarantine. I hope you guys are healthy. Uh, other than that, if you have any problems, shoot me an email. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.